Most of the corn and cotton grown in the U.S. has been genetically engineered to produce insecticidal BT toxins to prevent damage from insect pests. This technology can be more effective than growers spraying crops and therefore can lead to reductions in the amount of pesticide sprayed compared to non-BT crops. The greatest threat to the sustainability of BT crops is the development of resistance in target insect populations. Commercially available since 1996, BT corn remains effective for European corn borer control and can prevent damage from other pests of corn in South Carolina, including the fall armyworm and corn earworm. The corn earworm is also a common pest of cotton where it is known as bollworm. And BT cotton can also prevent damage from several pests, including the tobacco budworm and bollworm. However, the bollworm has over time become more resistant to some BT toxins, which has led to increased sprays of insecticide in cotton. The corn earworm is abundant in our cornfields, where it is generally not an economic pest. However, corn is a preferred host in our landscapes and corn earworm populations are being selected in corn for resistance before the insect moves on to cotton later in the season. To prevent or delay resistance, mandatory insecticide resistance management practices for Bt corn include the use of a non-Bt refuge on the same farm that will serve as a source of susceptible insects, therefore diluting potential resistance genes in pest populations. These insecticide resistance strategies rely on mathematical models to predict durability of Bt toxins and resistance evolution. However, these models are only as good as the data used to build them. The objectives of this work are to generate data that can then be used to improve insecticide resistance management plans. Research includes quantifying the survival of corn earworm on Bt corn and potential sublethal effects of Bt toxins on the biology of survivors. Replicated field trials at the Clemson University PD-REC are planted with Bt and non-Bt corn. The corn earworm moth lays eggs on the silks of corn ears. The newly hatched larvae move down the silk channel to the corn ear where most of the feeding occurs. Mature larvae then drop to the ground to form a cocoon or pupa from which a moth will emerge and move on to other crops such as cotton or soybean. In order for us to assess survival of corn earworm in the field, we collect corn ears with mature larvae and we place them in boxes with soil which are then carefully excavated to determine depth of pupil chamber in the soil and pupil weight. We know that larger pupae tend to pupate at greater depths in the soil than smaller pupae, and pupil depth can be related to survival, because our previous work has shown that feeding on Bt corn can sometimes lead to smaller pupae, we hypothesize that survival of pupae will depend on whether the insect is fed on the Bt crop or not. We are also working with colleagues at North Carolina State University and the University of Maryland to identify resistance genes in corn earworm to Bt toxins and to evaluate the flight capacity of corn earworm surviving on Bt and non-Bt corn that can then be used to refine resistance models. Quantifying this effect of a Bt crop on the biology of a key pest is important to understand the spatial and temporal dynamics of this insect in our diverse landscapes. This research fits within the mission of the PDREC to foster economic stability by improving sustainability of field crops by delaying the development of resistance to insecticides in a key pest, which in turn can help to reduce both crop damage and the need to use insecticides. Effective insecticide resistance management strategies are the only tools available to growers to delay resistance. As resistance has developed to several Bt toxins already in corn earworm populations, there is currently a single Bt toxin that provides excellent levels of control for corn earworm in both corn and cotton. We are likely years away from any new insecticidal transgenic trait in corn and cotton, and we therefore need to preserve susceptibility to Bt toxins in key pests to prevent both increases in crop damage and additional use of pesticides.